Hallelujah. God bless you. We're continuing from where we left off earlier. Uh, you can just put it from the beginning. It's okay. We're going to, I'll just recap just a little bit in case you weren't here earlier. Our topic is God's rewards. There is more in store for you. That's where we are. We kind of even looked at the, uh, the Olympics. Let's see here. We looked at the Olympics earlier and how amazing Olympics are with all the massive athletes. We then went to 1 Corinthians chapter 9 and recognized that God talks about running a race also. And he said, we don't run like others. The world runs and disciplines their body for, uh, an imper for a perishable crown, but we discipline our bodies for an imperishable crown. And he said, we don't run like the world runs. We discipline this body so that we will not preach to others and ourselves become disqualified and we looked at that and we saw some who were disqualified in the Olympics um, whether it's the men's 4x100 team the U.S. Shakari Richardson who was disqualified in the last Olympics but got herself right and was not disqualified and even the woman uh, Kip Yakon who was disqualified from Kenya but then was reinstated that you can be disqualified. And then we began to talk about people who are disappointed by God because they've been bombarded by bad theology. Um, and I looked at the fact that I, 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 I don't want to be disqualified. I don't want to be disqualified. We even looked at every day we hear about people planting seeds and speaking it out and claiming your blessing. And it brings about a misunderstanding of who God is oftentimes because it's imbalanced. Um, and uh, really, if we're we, uh, in faith today, but we rarely hear the full story. And the real full story is about God's reward system. So we spent this morning looking, starting from a passage in, in Revelation 22 that is the final chapter and the final book of the Bible that gives us how things will be. And Jesus ultimately says at the end, uh, well, at the end of where we were in verse 12, he is coming quickly and his rewards are with us. Very few, I, I don't hear many Christians, many saints, just encouraging others, talking about our ultimate eternal rewards and how that fits. And we saw some greatness from that passage, but we really focused on heavenly rewards. I need that to become part of your mentality, part of your, part of your vocabulary, part of your, psych, uh, your, your mindset, part of your, um, uh, 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 even your motivation. Um, and it's impossible to feel down. There are so many people who are looking at here and now, and they try to quantify what God is doing in their life, and there's so much more God wants to do that you won't see until later. We were clear that we're not saved by works. We're saved through faith, by, by grace through faith. We're clear about that, and we saw that in the Bible. But however, we recognize that we will be judged by the supreme judge, based on our works. We're saved by grace through faith, but we will be judged ultimately and rewarded based on our works. And I began to talk about that. And I talked about the two judgments, the white throne judgment, which judges sin. And we saw that in Revelation 20, 11 to 15, that it judges those who have sinned for the sins that they do. And then finally, the judgment seat of Christ, which is also called the Bema seat. Uh, this is a quick review. Bema seat and the judgment seat of Christ is where we will be awarded or rewarded for our works and we see that the judgment seat of Christ uh, and throughout the biblical text in here in 2nd Corinthians 5 10 it says we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ now I'm going kind of fast but I'm reviewing because we went over this all this morning you can listen to the message this morning and you will get these notes but I just want to bring you up to where we are so it says we must appear with the judgment seat of Christ made a mistake this morning in my notes and that's there too I don't know hmm. How'd that happen? I changed it. 
maybe I didn't save it. If that's not there, we might have a problem, Houston. All right, that's, that should be Romans 14.10. It's corrected in my notes um, that we will also stand before the judgment seat of Christ. And we only have a finite time, a finite time uh, to stand before God. And so we must work the works that he give us. This is why we only have the time that we have here on this earth. Somebody asked me after church, so is this a rented life? Is this a, you know, not our real life? No, this life we live goes into eternity, whether in heaven or in hell. And we have a finite time while we're here on earth to set whatever happens in eternity. And then we saw that God will test each and every one of our works um, yeah, yeah, we're just going to jump there. God will test each and every one of our works uh, to see if their kingdom work. There's a lot of people doing things that they were not, that they're wasting time. Now, they're, they're, I remember back in the day, I, was, I remember when I heard it. When I first heard it, I was in prayer and Bible band with a bunch of mothers, and they talked about the uh, church work and work of the church and the difference between the two and there are some things but I really believe that if you clean in this floor with the right heart and the right spirit that God will reward you for that I believe that that's not just church work that's not this I want God's house to be beautiful so somebody can see God and not be distracted I want to usher and usher people into his presence I want to make sure things are in order all of that and may God test our work where it comes from, and our motives. We also saw that there are people who can lose their rewards. Uh, they can lose rewards. I don't know what's going on with my clicker here, but it's, it's failing me right now. They can lose rewards. There it goes. Uh, that deceivers have gone out, and they will cause us to lose our rewards before God. And then finally, earlier I talked about the few crowns that we could have. I'm going to, I'm not sure what's happening. That there's a few crowns, and there are more crowns, and I just went through three crowns that we have available to us. Um, 2 Timothy 4, there it goes, it's working now. 2 Timothy 4 talks about that we can have the, uh, laid up for us as the crown of righteousness. Um, James 1.12 reminds us that, there's, that we will receive the crown of life. And then finally, 1 Peter 5, 2 through 4 talks about that we can receive as shepherds the sacrifice of leading people and the difficulty of it. We can have the crown of glory. This is for the people that smell like sheep, by the way. You got to smell like sheep to get the crown of glory. If you smell like the palace, then you're not a shepherd. You got to smell like sheep. And that brings us, and then we end it by saying that God wants you to be an eternal champion. So earlier this morning was me stating the case that there are rewards. And we stated the case of what I just said. I don't want to recap that, that there are rewards. But now that brings us now to part two. And it begs the question, after all that I said earlier, and this is why I said I'll come back, and I'm so glad you came back. There are rewards. There are from God, eternal rewards for those who are saved. And he gives them based on the works that we do, based on what, based on what they are. But then one, one, it begs the question, how do I earn these rewards? And that's what I want to get into now. Now, I'm not probably going to tell you anything you don't know, but in the context of what I'm telling you now, it'll make all kinds of sense. How do I earn these rewards? There's rewards in heaven. What, 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 really, what will not be burned away by the fire? Are you with me? How will I get to God and not be surprised that, what, this is no good? You mean I was wasting my time? What is that? How does that fit? And this is why we're back. So I have eight things, eight things, eight, eight. I didn't number them, but I know it's eight. So I don't have numbers next to them. And these are rewards for. And I looked through the Bible and I put these down. And actually, this blessed me this morning. I mean, this, yeah, this blessed me even today before this service that I came here. First, we're going to go to the Sermon on the Mount, which talks a lot about rewards. And we almost skip over it. We almost skip over it and miss it. And so, because, they've, because the enemy has us thinking about here and right now. And even in life, if you only think here and now, you don't even live a good life. 
you get your paycheck and you only think about here and now. You ain't saving no money. You're not planning for the future. <laughs> your life's going to be miserable. Uh-oh. I think I hit something. Look on some faces now. You're not looking at me like maybe I need to dig deeper in there. I'm not digging there. You spending your paycheck, living from paycheck to paycheck. Well, you don't have to live paycheck to paycheck. No, man, it ain't about how much money you make. It's about what you do or what you get. Hey, Amen. You just think about here and now, you eating out all the time. Forget about what that's going to do to your health. Just think about what it's going to do to your budget. Hey, Amen, somebody. All right. If you just hanging out, I always wanting to have a vacation every month. Yep, I need some me time. All right, and you ain't going to have no real time later on. So um, we can't just think of here and now. We got to think uh, futuristically. We got to think bigger. So here's what we're rewarded for. First thing, we're rewarded. This is, these are things that God is definitely going to reward us for in eternity, not because I said it, but because the Bible says it. We're rewarded for enduring persecution. To endure persecution. Matthew 5, 11 to 12. Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward. <laughs> now, why are they talking about me? And you know what? I, I really, once I really matured in God, and this is what I'm trying to help you to do, I'm kind of excited when people like coming at me. Not because I'm in petty mess and I'm always talking and in some mess, but they coming at me for doing kingdom work. That means, oh, wait. I'm on to something. And God says, you're blessed. When's the last time you thought you was cursed because people was coming against you because you was doing God's word? Which means the devil has deceived you against God's word. Why don't they like me? Why don't they this? They're not supposed to like you. You bless when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely. It shouldn't be true. <laughs> falsely for my sake not because you the mess rejoice and be exceedingly glad because great is your reward in heaven so I will gain rewards you go to church too much you pray too much you too you too saved you got friends that's supposed to be saved that will tell you you too saved now that ever happened to anybody I had people that witnessed to me and told me I need to get saved. And then when I got saved, they said I was too saved. And then I found out they not saved. They were like, Vincent, you need to be saved. You bad. You need to be saved. I'm, 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 I literally am mocking a woman right now. I remember that woman in my face. And I was like, get out of my face. Get in my face. Then I got saved. I'm like, hey, I'm saved. Like, you done went too far now. You always just, ooh. Ooh. Like, oh, I'm saved. Blessed are you when they persecute you and say all kinds of evil falsely against you. Any, if you don't have nobody lying on you, you ain't doing nothing. You got anybody lying on you? I'm talking about, I'm, uh, uh, hello. You got anybody lying on you for the Lord's sake? If you're not, you don't have nobody lying on you, you ain't doing nothing. Speculating, lying on you, and you sitting here feeling sorry for yourself. The Bible says, Jesus says, rejoice. You should be like, yes, I'm on to something. They lying. Whoa, I'm on to something. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad. For great is your reward in heaven. You want a reward? Folks, gonna, somebody going to come against you. People going to come against you. Next reward is still in the, the, the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew 6, verse 2 through 4. Therefore, when you do a charitable deed, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets that they may have glory from men. Surely I say to you, they have their reward. And this is deep. But, but when you do a charitable deed, this is New King James, uh, when you do a charitable deed, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, that your charitable deed may be in secret, and your father who sees in secret will himself reward you openly. 
We live in a day of social media. Everybody don't need to know what you're doing. Because when you do, when everybody know what you're doing. Now, here's the other thing. We don't, we don't bless others to be seen, but we should be seen blessing people. See, it's the difference between being seen blessing and doing it to be seen. And so he says, you do that, and, and people give you a pat on the back, and you're doing for an attaboy, and we want, did you know what I did? You know what I did? You got your reward. And that really, trust me, that ain't enough because them folks that say something ain't studying you as soon as they walk away from you. But when you do a charitable deed, you bless somebody, you help somebody, you bless somebody, you give, or even to give. That's why we'll make a big deal in the offering. We'll make a big deal who gave what. Because God going to bless you. Hello, somebody. But when you do a charitable deed, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. Yeah, but, but, yeah, but people need to know. I've had people come to me and say, church ain't doing nothing. And I don't have to tell them, we doing this, we doing this, we doing this. You know what? Because when I tell them that, they ain't studying, they ain't listening anyway. And now I got my reward anyway. Church ain't doing nothing. Okay, that's what you think. That's your day at church. You should come to my church. We doing something. Church, the church, black church, or, or they say the black church ain't doing nothing, which I don't even know what that even means. Where's a black church? I ain't found one black church in the Bible yet. Your charitable deed may be done in secret. Your father sees and open. So as I am a giver, I bless others. I'm giving as I give uh, uh, in the, in the uh, even give in the ministry and do all kinds of things. God will bless and reward and show himself in great ways. Hallelujah. As a matter of fact, as I'm a giver, God will reward and bless me in eternity. And we'll see something else that fits with that. There will be kind of something that almost seems redundant, but it's a growth on it. You all with me? All right, let's go to the next one. Why is everything freezing up? Okay, there we go. There are rewards for fasting. That's deep, ain't it? We fast to discipline our bodies. That's really what we focus on. But to fast, it says, moreover, when you fast, do not be like the hypocrites with the sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces, and they may appear to men to be fasting. And surely I say to you, they have their reward. So you posting, hey, everybody, I'm fasting the next 10 days, and y'all ain't going to see me online, and I'm laying before the Lord. And then tomorrow you back online. I'm so hungry, y'all. What y'all think? <laughs> hey, everybody, ooh, I'm going through. You got your reward of people writing, ooh, you so, ooh, you so spiritual, ooh, you so great. That's your reward already. That ain't fasting. You just on a hunger strike. You just didn't eat. You're not fasting. He says, but you, when you fast, anoint your head, wash your face. In other words, anoint your head. You can anoint yourself with oil. Wash your face off. The anointing's still there. Wash your head, wash your face, so that you do not appear to men to be fasting. But to your father, who is in the secret place, and your father, who sees in secret, will reward you openly. Now, somebody says, that sounds like today. What about the Bema seat? When you go up to the Bema seat, he's going to reward you openly then. God's going to say, you engaged in deferred gratification from food, from television, from pleasure, from all these other things. You, did, you set aside to get close to me. In eternity, when you go to see God, I'm going to reward you for that. You deferred your gratification. You didn't want to watch the, you didn't watch your, 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 your shows because, you know, you can't be fasting and watching TV. You, you, you cut all that out for some time with me. I'm going to reward you for it. And he blesses us in this life. By the way, and we already know it, but I just thought I'd throw it out there in case there's one person never heard me say it. And he blesses our bodies. He, 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 you, did you know fasting can eat up cancer? Oh, Lord, because our bodies are made to heal itself. Yeah, fasting to eat up sickness in your body. You got, well, that can't be no, um, I'm waiting on lunchtime fast. That's an extended fast, but yeah. Another way we receive, are you all with me? 
So we can receive rewards, the rewards we talked about earlier. How am I receiving rewards? What are the rewards that bring imperishable crowns? It is uh, whether I am persecuted and I endure it, I don't give up, and some persecution is just literally they talking about me. Okay. Uh, I'm a giver, I'm a faster, and then we're also rewarded for giving in the kingdom, investing in the kingdom. I had some notes. Where are my notes? Uh, for investing in the kingdom. Matthew 6, 20. Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. Now, if you're laying up treasures in heaven, that is a type of reward. Are you all with me? That's the treasure. Lay up treasures in heaven. That's a type of reward. So God is saying here, uh, it's not about how you invest here. It's how you invest in the kingdom. These, and, and how do we invest in the kingdom? Well, let me see here. I wrote this down. Sharing the gospel with others. And there will be some, we'll see that too. Serving others. Using our time, our talents, our resources to help people in need. That's storing up our treasures. Giving to God's work, giving, supporting ministries, supporting charity, coming to the, uh, the, the dinner, and supporting education, Christian education, praying and interceding on behalf of others, lifting others and communities and nations to God, discipling and mentoring, or I won't say mentoring, discipling others. That's how you store up treasures. You build relationships where you will have friends in heaven. We talked about that before. Living a life of obedience. Following God's commands and living according to his will. Or here's how we store up treasures. Forgiving and showing mercy. We'll see that again, by the way. Forgiving and showing mercy to others. Uh, extending grace and kindness to others. Using our talents for God's glory. You talented. You haven't shared it for God's glory yet. You only do it to make money. You got all that talent you learned in school. You do it at your job. You didn't do it for the glory of God. You just only, only if I'm getting paid am I going to do this. Sharing that talent for God's glory. Supporting the marginalized. Caring for the poor, widows, orphans. That's true religion. And the oppressed. Or persevering in faith. Remaining steadfast. Say, I'm not giving up on my investment in the kingdom. These bring these eternal investments bring about joy, fulfillment, heavenly reward from eternity, and demonstrate our love for God and for others. How else do we receive rewards? You can receive rewards for losing your life. Give up your life. If you lose your life, yeah. Yeah. Then Jesus said to his, Matthew 16, 24 to 27, Jesus said to his disciples, if anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what profit is it to a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? For the Son of Man will come in his glory, in the glory of his Father, with his angels. Then he will reward each according to his works. What works is he talking about? Denying what I want. So what I mean about losing your life, I'm not talking about physically dying. It is, this is what I want, but I'm not going to take what I want. I'm going to do what God wants. <sighs> the enemy says, be true to yourself. Do whatever you feel. I'm going to be true to me. This is what I like. This, that's what I'm going to do because I got to be true to me. I got to be true to myself. If we want to be rewarded by God, we say, I want that, but I'm going to do your, what you want. Not Jesus said it like this, not my will, but your will be done. 
And when we do this, God is pleased. And it says he will come with his angels and then he will reward us according to that. You wanted to do this. You wanted to be in that relationship. You wanted to go there. You wanted to take this job, but I told you to take that job. You wanted to go here, but I told you to go there. You wanted to do this, but, you, but I wanted you to do that. And you followed me. That sacrifice in losing your life, submitting your will, our will to his will, brings about heavenly rewards. Now the challenge is, we've been told, it's all about pleasuring ourselves. I need to be pleasured. And I need to be happy. I don't see nothing in the Bible that you need to be happy. What I need to be is to follow God to obedience because what makes me happy today can lead me to destruction. Amen. You can also be rewarded. Are y'all with me? Okay, because we just looking here how, because we looked at there are rewards. What are the rewards that last? You can be rewarded for loving your enemies. By the way, I got nine. I said eight. I just remember I added one when I counted. Reward for loving enemies and the unthankful. Have you ever helped somebody and they just don't appreciate what you did for them? Has that ever happened to you? Man, I don't know if that can... I remember I told you a story. I had my children. I don't even remember which ones. And I'm riding around, and my wife, you know, my wife fought me because I used to have my boys because I always take my boys with me. Wherever I go, I want my boys to go with me. My boys, they're big enough. My boys going to roll with me. And um, I don't eat really much during the day. And then they'll come home. As soon as they walk in the house, say, I'm hungry. And she said, why didn't you feed them? I'm like, they didn't say they was hungry, so we was rolling. Right? So. They were small. Thank you for that input. They were little children. And I said, they ain't say nothing, so I thought they were good. And they'd come in, Mom, I'm hungry. I said, why didn't you say nothing to me? So I tried to make sure I always bought them something to eat because there was somebody at home that, that, that first thing they said, did your daddy feed you? So, okay, I'll make sure they eat. So one day, I pull up at the drive-thru of some fast food restaurant, and I buy them a meal. They call it a happy meal, a fun meal, whatever. And I give them a meal. I give them their stuff. And usually I take ties out of their bag, out of the fries. I take ties, right? Take the ties. Like, y'all got to pay ties on these fries. <laughs> but this time I didn't take the ties out, right? So I said to my son, uh, gave him the bag. Then I said, can I have some? He said, no. I just bought this with my money. You wouldn't have it without me, and now you got the nerve to tell me no? Needless to say, I was tempted to eat everything in that bag. <laughs> just to show him that it's mine. He was unthankful. Of course, he learned how to be thankful by the time I got done with him. But I made him sure he understood, and he paid more than tithes on them fries. Yeah. <laughs> I said, well, let me show you something. Let me show you what I can put all them fries in my mouth at one time. But anyway, <laughs> the bottom line is, ooh, we can rise some up in you when you help somebody or do something from somebody, and they're they not even thankful. We used, to, we used to have a food program. We called it Lunch with Jesus. And what we did with Lunch with Jesus is um, sharing. This was sharing service. Tuesdays and Thursdays during the day at 12 noon, we would have a service and cook. And anybody could come and eat for free, whether you needed it or not. And this, this was for some people, they only church service at the other tabernacle. I, there was a whole congregation during the day. I didn't know, but they were part of the church. And there were some ladies that used to come to the lunch with Jesus. They didn't have much, but they would come and stand in line. And as they dish food out, because there was 24 languages in our church, 24 languages. So it was 24 languages in the church. It was impossible for anybody to know all the languages in the church. But the Holy Ghost gives you interpretation of language. And them lady would stand right in front of Sharon and talk about her like a dog as she dished their food. Now, she didn't just dish food. 
Because most people in the world don't eat meat every day. They, most people don't eat meat every day, just eat vegetables or whatever. She made sure there was meat on Tuesdays and Thursdays and making sure you feed them and their babies. And she would come home and tell me, Sister so-and-so, this woman, she come and they just talked about me, talked about me, talked about me like a dog, talked about anything they could. I mean, evil talking about you. In your face! Then they switch from that language to English and talk about it. Who you think? You ain't nothing. You ain't this. You ain't that. Give me my food and move on. So Sharon was upset about it. Then Sharon told me something. She said, the Lord dealt with me because I expected whoever I'm helping to be grateful and thankful and kind and whatever else. And that is arrogance. And I said, what? She said, yeah, because I'm not doing it for them to be appreciative of me because, notice, the wicked do stuff for people because it makes them feel good about themselves. I helped somebody and I felt so good about myself. And we do it to glorify God. And I wish I could tell you that those ladies stopped being mean and evil. But she came to this revelation and they never were nice. They never were kind. They still mean to this day. <laughs> But you don't do it because somebody else is going to be thankful. Look what the scripture says. But love your enemies. Ooh. Do good. And lend. Lend. Loan. Hoping for nothing in return. And your reward will be great. And you will be the sons of the Most High. For he is kind to the unthankful and evil. Therefore, be merciful just as your father also is merciful. Some people are just takers. Some people are just takers. They don't give nothing back to nobody, don't nothing. They're, 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 they're just takers, always take, 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 take. It ain't, God, God will deal with them. It ain't, I ain't doing nothing for nobody no more because when I help people, people just make me look small. Man. It ain't even about you. It's, you got this whole thing, it's about you. And people are supposed to bow down. I've been places around the world, I've been poisoned more times than I can count. <laughs> People, been, people I thought would be nice, whatever else, they ain't nice. But God says, love your enemies. Is that easy? Now, to love your enemy don't mean just lay your head down and let them just keep beating you in the head. But love your enemies. Do good and lend, hoping for nothing in return. If you don't give it back, here you go. Your reward will be great. Mission of mercy. I visited people like about to die. They just about to die and pray for them and loved on them. I went in a house once. The whole house had tuberculosis. It smelled like tuberculosis. It smelled like sickness. It smelled like sweat and sickness. Everybody was sick, coughing. Ah, ah, ah. Whole house had TB. I thought I had TB right after that. I didn't. And um, so they were, people were so humble and so kind. And God raised them up. And they could barely talk to you. They was kind when they were sick. When God raised them up, they weren't that. And the thing was, oh, why did I even go to their house wasting my time? They weren't even members of my church. And God said, shut up. I told you to go love on people. It ain't about you. And we started saying, you they did to me and you didn't see. And then we, we talked to immature people. They said, yeah, yeah, you right. That's where you watch who you're getting your advice from. Who you getting your advice from? When you're serving God, sometimes some folks going to run. They ain't running over you. They running over Jesus in you. Whew. I'm going to tell you like the preacher I know say, hello, walls. <laughs> Amen, walls. Yeah. <laughs> Love your enemies. Who's your enemy? Love them. When your enemy is hungry, feed them. When they're thirsty, give them something to drink. 
Because in so doing, you heap coals of fire on their head. Romans 12. Love your enemies. Do good. Listen, you can't fake this stuff. This is, this is, this is bottom of the line Christianity. And the world, the world, the enemy wants to get us in the anti-God way. Do, do a young boy in school, I was in a public school, and um, I used to teach the Bible in the public school. I had a whole Bible. You know I had a whole Bible, Bible study crew and whole thing. And this boy was going off cussing somebody out. And I said, listen, what does the golden rule say? Do unto others. And he said, before they do unto you. <laughs> I said, that ain't the golden rule. They're not doing to others before they do unto you. No, as you would have them to do unto you. There was a time when I was lost and I was in a darkness and I actually thought I was right. And there were some people who loved me in that. And isn't it interesting that we want, we want grace for us, but we want judgment for others. Get me to love my enemies. Get me to do good and lend Bless others. Give me the re and my reward will be great. Who y'all with me? Can I move on? I had to stay there for a minute because it blessed me too. It was talking to me because I got some big, ugly, big, ugly enemies, big, ugly, powerful enemies. And when I think about them, I don't, I don't think love at first. So I'm like, Lord God, help me to love them, even if they never get right. Let me love the people who did me wrong and never said sorry. He didn't say sorry as if that's a license to do whatever I want to do. He didn't say sorry. They didn't apologize. So love your enemies. Because when they do you wrong, your father will fight for you. Because remember, I will bless them that bless you. And I will curse them that curse you. And I'm not doing you right for you to be cursed. I'm just doing right because I want to look like God. Man, I'm moving. You get a reward for evangelism and discipleship, telling others about the gospel. Are y'all with me? All right. First Corinthians chapter three, five through eight. Who then is Paul, and who is Apollos, but ministers through with, with through uh, through which you believed, as the Lord gave to each one. I planted, Apollo's watered, but God gave the increase. Now, look what it continues to say. Let me just do something here. There we go. So then neither, the one, neither he who plants is anything, nor he who waters, but God who gives the increase. Now he who plants and he who waters are one, and each one will receive his own reward according to his own labor. When you plant seeds in somebody that's sharing the gospel, you'll be rewarded. Sister says she's on the plane and the plane had problems and all kinds of things and people talking and she's asking people, do you know Jesus Christ? That's a seed. You're planting seeds. They don't have to receive it. I'm planting a seed. And then that, that's evangelism. And watering is discipleship. Spending, that's why we had the whole cookout. So we can spend time with each other. What nobody got cussed out. Nobody pulled a gun. Nobody passed out drunk. Nobody went home with nobody else's whatever. That, that, to show people that you can have a real good time and not live like the world. And you didn't have to put five on it. Have a good time. Wasn't no fighting. Wasn't no, nobody was over there gambling in the corner about to kill each other, throwing dice. We had a good time. Those who wanted to just sit out and chill, they sat out and chill. Those who wanted to play games did that. that that's discipleship showing that we're watering one another. Hey Amen. How you going? How you making it? You making it all right? You good? It might have just been just that much that pushes somebody over there to make it. You know what happens though? We don't plant or water because the enemy wants us to always look at who's doing for me. Ain't nobody called me. Nobody talking to me. The Bible says, first, if you, want, you need a friend, you must show yourself friendly. 
If you a man and you don't have no man friends, what's wrong with you? You can't get no man friends? What's wrong with you, man? You don't talk to no man? You a woman and got no woman friends and you don't talk to no women. Go talk, to, go talk to a woman. Every woman ain't against you. You mean every woman bad? If I say that, would not be sexist? If I said all women bad, the same person that said all women bad would be mad at me. All women bad, yep, they all just, nah, 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 nah. No. When you, when, you, when you get out of self, this is where the rewards come. The reason why so many people missing this, and the reason why we, the enemy wants us to miss this, because you can't be self-consumed and do kingdom work. Because the kingdom ain't about me. It's about others. So I'm a plant. I just want to, every day I want to plant some seeds. Like what they say, Johnny Appleseed who planted apple seeds everywhere. Never ate the apples from him, but he planted trees everywhere. I want to, everywhere I go, I want to plant seeds. And then if I'm not planting seeds, I want to water some seeds. Maybe I need to check on, check somebody. I should be texting, how you doing? Just want to encourage you, how you doing? Hey, how you doing? I miss you at church. Hey, what's going on? Hey, just want to let you know God is good. Just want you to know I was thinking about you. That's watering. That's watering. But you just sitting, hmm, see, them church people don't talk to me. Nah, 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 I'm talking to me. And you a whole missionary? You a whole elder? I'm talking about church folks don't this and church folks don't that. I said, it take a hypocrite to know a hypocrite. <laughs> the mic ran out right then. When we engage in evangelism, by this way, these are two things you'll never do in heaven. When you get to heaven, there won't be no evangelism. When you get to heaven, there won't be no discipleship. Only disciples make it into heaven. We can only do this now in this life. Who are you looking out for? There's some of you, I, some of you, you were babies. You came and we checked on you all the time. Our expectation now is you checking on somebody. I can't be changing your diaper. <laughs> Pastor, you ain't changed my diaper in a while. I thought you was in drawers. You still in the pamper? What you doing in the pamper? You're supposed to be in drawers by now helping somebody else. I say that 15 more times. The next one is like the first one. There's a reward for preaching the gospel. This is my last one. Then I have a scripture that closes us out. 1 Corinthians chapter, five, chapter 9, 16 through 18. For if I preach the gospel, first of all, a lot of what we call preaching ain't preaching. Let me tell you something. A lot of what we call preaching, this is why churches are full of women with no men in them. It's a whole bunch of emotionalism to try to sway women. I'm telling y'all this right now. It's to sway women because that's why men won't listen to it. God, go, God know you feel bad. God know you. It's always emotional. It's always something. It's all, I know they against you. I know you this. That ain't the gospel. All this emotional stuff they preaching. And it's dudes preaching it. They target women and gay men. I know I'm telling the truth. I know I'm telling the truth. I watch them do it. They manipulate self. They want to touch your emotions and fway with your emotions. and da, 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 da. Ah! The gospel of Jesus. If I preach the gospel, not no motivational speaking. Not no mamby pamby, all this stuff coming out there. Not no new age mixed with the Bible. The gospel of Jesus Christ is a difference. And discerning ears, discerning eyes know the difference. That's why we got strong women and strong men up in here. Women, you can say boom, join us. Boom! You got no women sitting here looking for God to be their cosmic sugar daddy. No, I'm telling the truth. You got these folks got conferences. You got to pay $3,000 so you can be blessed. It's $3,000 to come plant in and lay it down and we're going to rub on your head and give you some holy anointing hair grease. 
The devil is a liar. Manipulating because that whole, that whole line comes through because the, the government does the same thing, manipulating women. I know I'm telling the truth. We're going to take care of you. We got you. That's why they're even telling you now. Black men think this, but black women, they're going to follow with what we say. That's what they're saying. They, they say it straight in real time in the news. But there's some things a man ain't going to fall for, and there's some things a real woman ain't going to fall for. And the gospel is for everybody, everywhere, all the time. Gospel can't be American. That if you really save, God going to bless you and you're going to have great clothes. What you going to say that to somebody in India on fire for God? Just got their church burnt down. Just got shot. When you get baptized in India, folks writing your name down to come kill you at night. And they bold enough to get baptized. And I'm wearing the same thing every day. And you telling me I don't have faith because I don't have uh, clothes from the outlet? You out your mind. Because I'm not wearing a custom shirt, wearing custom drawers. You out of your mind. That ain't the gospel. Because of what you got on. Because of what you look. Because God put for. That's not the gospel. How you know there's a God? He put clothes on my food. Put clothes on my back. Put food on my table. What if you didn't have food on your table? He's still God. Even if I don't have food on my table, but I guarantee you what, it may not be what I want, but he's God. That is the gospel. God is God. He's the king of everything everywhere. And they told me, they told me when I came back home, don't you be preaching this Bible stuff. Ain't nobody going to come to your church. Devil is a lie. Ain't nobody with them, but they with us because we following Jesus himself. And if I preach the gospel. Got time for this fake stuff, emotional stuff. Jump up, water wave, move crying, high five, talk to somebody. Now I'm going to tell you, you coming through, you coming through, you coming out, you coming out. Man, come on, man. Man, I, I'm going through, I'm coming out, devil is a lie. Tell me something, I'm a warrior. Hello, warrior women. Hello, warrior men. Every time I'm coming, you going through, you're going to come out. And then four more days, it's going to be money in your bank. And three more days, you're going to come out of it. Uh, uh, your enemies, he going to give you two. That ain't the gospel. Quit playing with my emotions. Don't let nobody play with you. Quit playing with me. You want a psychologist? Go find one. But you, this, this is the gospel. <laughs> okay. Went off on a little tangent there. <laughs> For if I preach the gospel, I have nothing to boast of. If I preach the gospel, don't make me no great preacher. I didn't even think of none of this. It was already written. How are you so smart? You, you preaching a message that's been preached for over 2,000 years. How you get to be so smart? This ain't your stuff. You preaching somebody else's stuff. We straight plagiarizing. We talking for God. I have nothing to boast of. All I got to do is read the manual and repeat it. You repeating the manual and you somebody. You, you ain't nobody. You just a messenger. You just a mailman. The mailman bring the check. When did the mailman bring you a check and you praise the mailman? Oh, mighty mailman. Oh, mighty mailman. Thank you for the check, Mr. Mailman. Oh, the way you put that check in my mailbox. He don't have nothing to do with that check. He just a mailman. You praising the mailman for putting the check? You didn't even say thank you to the person who sent you the check. You made a hero out the mailman. Cooked him a dinner. Bought him a suit. Bought him a car. <laughs> Celebrated his mailman anniversary. Did everything for the mailman. And the one who sent you the check just waiting on you to tell him thank you. But you were in love with the mailman. Because the mailman come by every day and you ain't seen the one who sent the check. You see him through the check that he sent. 
The mailman come by every day. I ain't seen, I ain't seen the one since the mailman at my house every day. I praise my mailman. Hey, mailman. Come on in, mailman. Woo-hoo. Ooh, he my favorite mailman. That's how I look. You won't even come to church. You can't even have a conference unless your favorite mailman there. What kind of mess is that? I don't know. That's what happened when we first started our church. I invited folks and people, I don't know who that is. Yeah, there's about 8 billion people you don't know who they are. People, I don't know who that, who is that? I'm not bringing somebody just because they got a bunch of hits on YouTube. He's just a mailman anyway. I, I, wait, I'm a, I want to hear him. I want to hear him. Uh, he should be saying what the person who wrote the check told him to say. That's just me. When I got saved, I just, I just stupid is stupid. That's the first thing God saved me from was stupid. <clears throat> For okay, let's go to the text. <sighs> I got a few more minutes. Whoa. It's got to eat humble. For if I preach the gospel, I have nothing to boast of for necessity is laid upon me. I preach it because I got to. Yes, woe is me if I do not preach the gospel. It's like fire. Shut up in my bones. I'm speaking for God. For if I do this willingly, I have a reward. But if against my will, I have been entrusted with the stewardship. What is my reward then? then? That when I preach the gospel, I may present the gospel of Christ without charge. Huh? Real preacher don't have no price tag. How much you charge? The Bible says, wait a minute. <laughs> that when I preach the gospel, I may present the gospel of Christ Without, I can't have no price tag and be no preacher. How much it costs to get so and so to come here? Well, he costs this much, she costs that much. We're gonna try to shout you, take an offering. He's gonna preach, do a fake altar call, pump fake, and make it an offering. I watch the game, y'all pump fake altar call. I want to pray. Who want to be saved? Whoops! Let's drop $30 right now and plant a seed and I got another line for a hundred because we got expenses. That shark skin suit. That when I preach the gospel, I may present the gospel of Christ without charge that I may not abuse my authority in the gospel. Is it wrong to give to the woman of God? Is it wrong to give to the man of God? When he come, when she come with a price tag, see ya. There's a reward for preaching, proclaiming the gospel. There's a reward for proclaiming the gospel. And that's not just to somebody with a title, preacher. We all should be preachers. We must preach. Are y'all with me? You know how to, now you know, you know the criteria, you know who the rewarder is, and you know how to get the rewards. Y'all with me? You may not like the criteria, just like when you got your job, but that's the benefits package. That's the package. Now, I got one last scripture, and I'm done. It comes from Colossians. Don't lose your reward with churchianity and religious foolishness. Do y'all hear me? I'm going to preach this again. I'm going to preach this every year. Same slides, different pictures. So let no one judge you in food or in drink or regarding a festival or a new moon or Sabbaths. That's deep. Which are a shadow of things to come. But the substance is of Christ. Let no one cheat you out of your reward. Do you see that? Let no one cheat you out of your reward taking delight in false 
Human, I'm not making this stuff up, y'all. I'm not hard. I'm not hard enough. Taking delight in false humility. Hmm. Lost my place. And worship of angels. Intruding into those things which he has not seen. Vainly puffed up by his fresh fleshly mind yeah thank y'all by his fleshly mind and not holding fast to the head from whom all the body nourished and knit together by joints and ligaments grows with the increase that is from God let's go back up don't let nobody cheat you with all this churchianity you know churchianity churchianity is not christianity it's just church stuff superimposed upon people like the Pharisees did to the Jews. Stuff that you can get so caught up, and I mentioned it earlier, so caught up, so tied up in a bunch of stuff. You're going to this, going to that, going to this, going to that. Busy, busy, busy. No kingdom value. From event to event to event to event to event. I'm talking, y'all. I don't care what denomination. I don't care where it is. From event to event to event to event to event. And when you look back, where was God glorified in your running? You tired? Woe out? And say, we were churching. What does that even mean? Because if we were churching, we'd be doing this stuff that you get rewards for. Don't let anybody cheat you of your reward, taking delight in all these things, false humility and worship of angels, intruding on all these things. Don't anybody get you all caught up in arguments, all these arguments, and now you're trying to fit in and you're trying to fit whatever. There's all kinds of demonic voices to pull you away. And I'm gonna, if I'm going to be busy, if I'm going to be tired at the end of the day, let it be tired, because I'm going to be tired at the end of the day. Let, let me be tired doing something that matters. I'm going to tell you a secret. It's personal. I probably shouldn't be telling you. I got a series of emails this week. The email thread. All kinds of stupid stuff. You know what I did? I ignored it. I didn't even read it. I got, I got, we got 50 children here at school that we raising up the next generation. I'm sitting here in school with these children and I'm my phone, ding, 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 ding. This person, why didn't you, da, da, da. Then they text me, da, 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 da. You know what? Yeah, I'm good. I'm gonna work on this here. Cause I'm not, I'm gonna sit here and my blood pressure up and I'm all messed up dealing with you. And there wasn't nobody in this church, by the way. Dealing with some mess. I hope y'all hear what I'm trying to tell you. Dealing with some mess. <laughs> Now let's meet and let's have a Zoom and let's this over nothing. You think I'm going to waste my time? I'm, man, I'm, I'm double nickel. I'm 55 years old. And forget about how old I am. Jesus come back any minute now. And he's going to catch me on the Zoom arguing about some stuff that don't matter. No, then say I'm unprofessional. I'm going to unsubscribe from this. I'm gonna, I, I'll take this over here. Don't let me lose my reward fighting and getting tangled up and tied up in no mess. That's real talk, real time. And that the problem I have with many of us is that you here today, you say amen, but tomorrow you upset because your mama said this and you got to do what your mama said. Because your mama saved and she must be right. If she wrong, she could be your mama. If she wrong, you're going to be paid. You're going to be judged because you listened to your mama and didn't listen to God. You listen to uncle. You listen to this one. You listen to that one. I, 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 if somebody in here and they preaching a different gospel, they not of us. They come to you in the lobby and say, yeah, Bishop was kind of tripping. That was, a, that was a little heavy. That was this. You better mark them. Because you will, you will lose your reward. They will cheat you. Because the enemy got plants. I know you grew up in church, and I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't talk about nobody, but I'll tell you what. Them folks said, don't watch the TV. Them people said, don't watch TV. 
And then everybody else was watching TV and they thought they went too far. So then they tried to fit in. Now I'm mad at them because they didn't stick with their revelation. Because they told, they said the television, man, Michael Gary, you all right. Because the television, they said was a hell of vision. And we said they went too far. Now I'm mad. Who was the first one to compromise and secularize us and put us on the TV? And now we all programmed. Now we deprogrammed. That's what I'm doing right now. Deprogramming you from the demons who've been talking to us. I had to drink it in honor of Michael Gary. <laughs> I can't just let it sit there. <laughs> Man gave it to me. I had to drink it. Drink something. Now you know how you will be evaluated, and now you know what we got to do. This is not a tabernacle thing. This ain't out the tabernacle handbook. This is out of God's handbook, out of your Bible. This is not a Vincent Matthews thing. I ain't never heard that. That's not my fault, but now you heard it. You remember what Josiah did? Josiah was eight years old. They cleaned out the temple. They found the Bible. They started reading. They said, I ain't never heard none of this, but this is some good stuff. Everybody got to go on fast, and we're going to follow this book. Because I didn't know don't mean I'm going to stick with something else. It's so much easier to think we're being evaluated on other things because I sold more tickets to the, to the tea, and everybody was at the tea, and we had a good time, and we all had a good time. Maybe the tea was worth it. But Father, help me to do some kingdom things. If I'm going to have a tea, let the tea be to your glory. Don't have me have a prayer breakfast and we don't even pray. You got a whole prayer breakfast and they got one opening prayer. That's it. And then we don't pray the whole time. Don't let me have a prayer call and all we do is preach at each other and we don't pray. Don't let me, don't let me be a preacher and I don't preach. Don't let me be a saint and I don't do what you called me to do. And quit letting me make excuses because of how I was raised or where I came from or what they did in the church where I was. Because none of that matters now. It matters what God is saying in the revelation now. In the kingdom era that we're in right now. We're in the kingdom era. Whew. Can we stand? Can I we recognize something. When Tabernacle Church started, this is not a church for women only. It's a church for men and women together serving God but the men must be the priest provider and protector must be the priest of their home must provide for their family community and protect us this resolution today was so important because it reminded us that we must honor God we must honor our families we must walk in forgiveness we must walk in integrity we must not allow negativity or foolishness to arrive in our own minds our own hearts in our relationships in our church and in our community today this was an epicenter of change heard around the world when 50 men come together and many may not have been here some had uh, emergencies but 50 at least 50 men standing of all living generations saying I'm gonna be a godly man of character this is why it's so important our church has turned a corner our community has turned a corner the world has turned a corner because these men watch this space and see what they do to literally impact the world.